I know I started the live stream early yesterday and, and early today, but I have a lot of work to accomplish. And um, the earlier I start, the more work I get accomplished. Now, in regards to work, I'm going to talk about comments and while I'm live streaming. I don't want comments, but let's go to the keto diet day 15 results. So I have a tape measure that I measured off and marked uh, the chest, the belly, uh, thighs, calf muscles, and arms. Uh, that's I lost a quarter of an inch off my waist yesterday and also another quarter of an inch off my waist today. So in theory, at this point, the fat from the stomach is coming off slower and the fat from the rest of the body is metabolizing faster. Scott knows the words, ketosis faster, whatever. The, the Del Fuego, he knows about the keto diet. I just, I just follow his uh, tutelage and uh, the weight is pouring off. So I don't know what the weight is, but eight and a half inches off my waist, inch and a half off my calf muscles, uh, three inches off my thighs, where the thighs meet the torso, uh, six inches off my chest. So that's quite an accomplishment in 15 days. And I will tell you that yesterday I had zero carbohydrates that I know of from carbohydrates. There were a few carbohydrates in the 14 ounces of lean pork I made and I had an avocado, which has zero carbohydrates. So um, I had 700 calories of lean pork yesterday, bringing, bringing my total caloric intake in 15 days to 5,500 calories. I'm pretty sure, I have to check, but 5,500 calories in 15 days. So, but I'm at, on average, I'm averaging 330 calories a day. But yesterday, there were zero carbs from uh, from a half an apple that I would normally cheat with, according to Scott Del Fuego. I was cheating. So sue me. So that's uh, I'm very happy with. I feel a lot lighter. Um, I feel very strong. I wake up in the morning full of energy and ready to go. There's no more lag time between the time my eyes open and the time I get out of bed. I just open my eyes. I give it six or seven minutes of thought what I'm going to do for the day, which doesn't mean I'm going to do that. It just means that's the plan. I have the ability to make executive decisions and change the plan. So while we're talking about work, let me explain to you again why I don't want people commenting on my page unless they're my friend or providers of Patreon support or PayPal support. It's very simple. Ask yourselves if you had an employee, forget me, ask yourselves if you had an employee and he was working for you and every minute and a half to two minutes, the phone rang and the employee spent two or three minutes answering the question on the phone. How long would you employ that person? Hours? He'd be gone before lunch. She'd be gone before lunch. I'm working. I don't need your comments. So the people who I do reference their comments are people that have been supporting or were supporters or are my friends. Those are the only kinds of people I want on my channel. The rest of you people are just names on a screen. You mean nothing to me. You never meant anything to me. That's why I don't answer comments in general on my channel. I don't know who you are. I have no idea if you're a troll, if you're serious, and I don't care. I never cared and I'm never gonna care. Now, on to today's itinerary. I have prepped 50% of the work to get the machine to pick up the cement mixer, to fly it to the roof. However, I want to do one more thing with the cement mixer. I want to set up 
and I don't know that I could do this. Well, I, I know I can do it, but I don't know that I could do it today. Well, I know I could do it today, and it might take all day, but you're not going to be watching me do the job that I'm going to do. I want to set the cement mixer up to start it with a, an electric drill instead of trying to pull start this thing. It's a, it's a bear. It's a, a big diesel engine in there, and um, you have to release the compression. should start on one pull, but you need a man to pull it. And uh, I have modified engines in the past to start up with a hand crank. I even had engines that started with a hand crank. Now, I don't want to hand crank it. So I, I may just pull the, uh, the cover. I don't know what I can do. I, I didn't see the recoil. I might pull the cover of the recoil off and cut a hole in it and get a socket that fits the recoil nut if it's, well, I, I know I have the socket. That might be something I will do. Uh, however, what I am definitely gonna do is get, mark where the machine is on the ground, because I only have inches to turn the machine around in here now. I am gonna take the cement mixer out and put it in the parking lot in front of the house. From there, I'm going to knock down a little pile of dirt I have over there where I dug out for the dry well for the bucket so it wouldn't get water in the bucket or stay in the bucket. And then I, I may just fly the cement mixer up to the roof. I may do that. In order to get the jet ski, the, the machine needs to be turned around, which it will turn around, but it won't, it won't go forward. It won't go forward enough in the position that it's in. I need to go forward about five more feet to set the jet ski and the cement mixer up on the roof. So. Basically, I'm just going to open open up the front of the, the machine to get it ready to start, not to move the house, but to move the container, the cargo container. And then I have uh, about 12 milk crates that I talked about yesterday. I have 12 milk crates and a couple of plastic bags that need to go up on that roof as well as, as storage. It could get going to get a cover over it and whether it gets damp or rains on it it makes no difference the cover is just to cover it up from leaves and foreign foreign debris fog foreign object debris so uh i already got rid of two boxes of scrap wood that i don't need fodder we call that fodder um i just don't need it and it's dry rotted or not long enough pieces or just not quality lumber to do anything with. So I got rid of two boxes this morning. I gave it to my landlord and I, what else did I do? Oh, I, I did a few other things, nothing really important, but I do, I've already done more stuff as far as work is concerned than most of you clowns do in a week. So. Without further ado, um, I'm going to go to uh, go to my work, which will be the first part of this today's project is going to be to remove the cover from the cement mixer. Second thing is to mark off where the tracks are in the yard. So when I put the machine back in, I put it back in in the exact position it's in now so it will turn one way but not the other and then i also have to do something else i also have to prep when i get the cement mixer and the jet ski on the roof i i need to do one more layer of vinyl 
on the roof. Uh, can't find nine foot or ten foot vinyl, so I'm going to have to use two set six foot pieces to just let it drape over the roof, and that's it. It'll drape over the roof just fine. It'll work perfectly for my needs. So, and and that will uh, eliminate water from getting underneath that garbage poly polyphenolic, polyphenolic resin garbage they sold me from China. What garbage that's... Had I not painted it, I would be throwing it out. Had I not painted it three months ago, I would be throwing it out now. I'd be throwing it out and going to get new stuff. So I had uh, one, two, three, four, four, five, five sheets of that, and then seven more, 12 sheets. If I didn't paint it, I would have threw out I'd be throwing out 12,000 pesos worth of plywood right now. Today, I'd be throwing it out because it would be garbage by now. So you clowns that don't understand why things need to be painted, especially here in the Philippines, I don't know why you don't get it. I don't know why you haven't understood that what I do is true and correct. I don't know why you'd... You listen to the stupid, moronic, low-class, low-life, ignorant, basically illiterate bloggers on YouTube call me names and say things that aren't true. When has anything ever come true? When the uh, code enforcement inspectors came, did they say stop work on my property? No, they did not because my plans, permits, and what I'm doing is legal. But what did, did the police come and ask me if the jet ski was stolen? No, they did not. Because the jet ski isn't stolen, the police know that. So you listen to the, the worthless, absolutely degenerate level of bloggers on YouTube. Um, am I, am I uh, when I was accused of walking around naked and giving the children candy, or insinuated that I was, well, I, I'm, I, I walk around naked and give the children candy. Let me tell you something, dude. Let me tell you something, dude. You would never, you would never, I don't care how tough you think you are, how big and how bad you think you are. I know better. And you would never say anything like that to anyone's face. You would never say that to anyone's face. You're just a keyboard warrior. So just remember that because you'll have the opportunity again soon. You'll have the opportunity again soon. Now, one more thing that I did do this morning. You'll notice I put up a public service announcement on both my channels for hurricane and hurricane storm and tsunami warnings for the Pacific Ocean and more specifically for people that live in Hawaii because most of the Pacific Ocean is empty. And uh, I put those that informational public service announcement up because uh, there was a friend of mine said there was a tsunami warning in the Pacific Ocean, sent me a, a message via email, and I looked it up, and the buoys that operate the tsunami warning system are not working in the Pacific Ocean. And that means that the government is slacking and or they know something that they don't want us to know, and We'll find out when the wave hits shoreline. You, you don't get that methodology. When Obama didn't want us to know about radiation hitting America from Fukushima, he just turned off the radi radiological detectors on all public buildings and all the warships. Didn't tell the sailors or the soldiers on the ships and let them get irradiated. That's how the government works, guys. So... When uh, I put the public service announcement up so you could at least keep track of hurricane warnings, storm warnings, and tsunami warnings for the Pacific Ocean and more explicitly Hawaii. And I also put up, if you're living in Hawaii, I put up contact numbers to code enforcement because you may be living in, a, in, a, in an enclosure that's not legal or not up to hurricane specifications. So I want you people to understand I know about hurricane specifications. I built houses in the Florida Keys and I did electrical work on houses on the Pacific Coast in California in 
right where Scripps Oceanographic Institute is located in La Jolla, California. And even back then, in 1980, hurricane straps to, to, to the plates on the floor. The floor had to have double pressure-treated lumber plates on the floor. The straps had to go under the plates and around and back up and then up the stud 12 inches. Then at the top of the stud, the straps had to go from the 12 inches down on the stud to over the rafter joist, the rafter beam. So I don't know what they have in Hawaii, but in the Florida Keys, it was even more stringent than that. And um, when I did plumbing, I didn't build houses in the Florida Keys, but I did plumb out hundreds of houses while I worked for Windy Day Plumbing. And the, uh, the codes are the same or even more so than uh, California. So if you live in, on an island in Hawaii, anywhere near the shoreline or anywhere where a hurricane or a typhoon can hit you, I left the telephone number and the email address for Code Enforcement of Hawaii in case you're worried about the structure that you live in. So without further ado, I'll let you just watch the front of the property while I put my shirt on and then uh, and then we're going to work. Uh, whoo, whoo. <laughs> oh boy, that's that, uh, that's that cold water from overnight. There's no sun hitting that. That water's probably down around, uh, I would guess 75 degrees freezing for, uh, Philippines temperature wise. So I wet my shirt down, and I wet my head down, and that cools your body down, which allows you to do a lot more work in the, in any temperature, actually, until you get cold, of course. So this shirt feels cold going on, but feels good about 90 seconds later. It feels like, uh, feels like air conditioning, but actually the shirt has quite a bit of air conditioning in it already and and that's all part of the plan this is what we call the um fazio auto cooling shirt <laughs> and you could tell that it's auto cooling because of the multiple uh multiple multiple holes in the shirt it's um it's still good it's still good as long as it drapes over the the head even if it just hangs like a smock, a smock. Remember when you was in kindergarten and they gave you a smock and then they give you some yellow paint and they told you to go make something with this yellow water-based paint? Hey, Fazio, here's some yellow paint. Go do something with this with your fingers. Finger painting, remember that? It was pretty cool. Whew, that felt good. All right, uh, now I need to open up probably going to be fixing my shoes today too um now that my feet are not swollen anymore i and i've been wearing these uh size 13 uh, supposed to be the best sneakers sold in the philippines not filipino sneakers that's for sure those Sandugo sneakers, they last about a month with what with my weight and what I do for a living. Sandugo is uh probably fine for a Filipino that weighs 150 pounds and just walks on in in a in a building all day, but 
What I do climbing up and down ladders, it tears them apart. And in a matter of a few, three weeks, they're, the soles have separated from the, the whole rubber sole just falls off. I mean, literally five inches back from the nose of the shoe. So I'm probably going to be fixing my shoe today. First time I trip, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get out the drill. I'm going to drill some holes in the front of the shoe. I have my sewing kit. right behind me and I'm going to put this cord this industrial grade uh, fishing cord in the front of the shoe several wraps in fact I probably should do that first but I'll save that for an afternoon job and I have my uh, fishing sewing needles to do that with so uh, I'll, I'll repair the shoes because to buy another pair of these shoes, I forgot what the price was, but it was upwards of 7,000 pesos. And uh, they lasted a year, year and a half maybe, before they fell apart, but they have indeed separated. You know what I could do? I could just show you. How, how, no matter what, for the work I do, I haven't been able to buy a shoe in the Philippines that does my, my kind of work. And uh, I'm going to take my shoes off right now and show you how they're separated. And, uh, and yet, there were sneakers on a company called REI, and they were called Water, water Shoes, and you could buy those. And you could wear them in construction, walking up and down rocks, um, break walls, climbing ladders, uh, building seawalls and climbing up and down the rocks on the seawall, wet in the water, up on climbing up. the. You could wear them for two years and literally the bottom would wear out of the shoe before the shoe separated. So the garbage they sell us here in the Philippines is just another kind of garbage that they sell us here in the Philippines that doesn't work. Why can a company uh, called REI have a pair of shoes manufactured in China that last two years before the sole, before the bottoms of the shoes wear out without the, the shoe separating from the sole? Why can they buy shoes from China that don't fall apart and China sells the Philippine shoes that do fall apart. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll show you the show you how they fall apart right now. Because I paid $140 for these shoes. And if you think $140 isn't a lot of money for shoes in the Philippines, immediately, before I even got onto the tricycle with these shoes, there were dozens of people in the store where I bought the shoes. People were asking me if they could have those shoes. That, can I have those shoes, please? What are you, nuts? But I have been asked for my shoes 200 times since I got to the Philippines. Whenever you put a new pair of shoes or sneakers on, they ask you for your shoes. They're serious, too. So let's go over here and turn this around a little bit. Let me get a box. Let me get a box. Let me, and I'll tell you, uh, $140 for these sneakers, and they didn't last, well, they started blowing apart six months ago. They didn't last six months. So you tell me how, how that, how $140 is justifiable for a pair of sneakers. You show me. Oh, by the way, um, this is my right foot, and it is 99% uh, healed. For those of you who are interested, I just have some small wounds around this area here that need to be uh, finished off with the uh, healing process. So look at this. And I might as well get the might as well get the stuff out of the container right now for this because this I'm going to fall down and get hurt. Look at this. The glue that goes in here is absolutely worthless on this shoe. $140, it lasted just over a year before it separated. 
It's ridiculous. So what I'm going to do, here's the foot that was, uh, had all the uh, wounds on it. The whole top of the foot was, um, the whole top of the foot was open and uh, wounds. And the antibiotics have made the skin come back every day. It gets closer and closer. The swelling of the foot is gone. Very happy about that. So here's the sneaker. Look at this garbage. Look at this garbage they sell us here. This isn't even... $140 and 90% of the soul... 90% of the soul is still intact. 90% of the soul is still intact, and yet the sneaker fell apart. How do they justify this crap? Let me, let me show you a different way. Look at this. This is disgusting. $140 for a pair of sneakers that fell apart in less than a year. This is crazy. Who can afford to buy a $140 pair of sneakers every year? Who can do that? I, even I couldn't do it. That's why I'm going to... I'm going to go into the shop right now and get the, get a drill bit. And I'm going to sew these bad boys up. Hey. Hey. Rat. Rat. I know you're out there. Hey, I, I, I remember that song. I started to sing it yesterday. One good rat deserves another. Between hangs your... Remember that? Remember that one? Remember that when we was a kid, we would say that? Well, there's never been a truer, truer motto than that when it comes to being a rat. Remember that motto that we had when we were children? I remember it. Rat, 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 rat. Let me go get a... You guys watch the, uh, you watch the store for a few minutes and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to check the comments. Okay. I'm going to go get the drill. I'll set up the needle and thread right here. It's a good place to work. Rat. One good rat deserves another. Between my hangs your... I forgot the rest of... I don't want to hear the rest of the song. If somebody puts it up there, they're going to get blocked. I don't like those bad memories of childhood memories of antagonizing people. Far be it from me to do such a thing. So what I'm going to do is set this up. One good rat. Oh boy, grabbed the wrong end. Yeah, I think I'll fix this first. Because if I if I don't fix this first and I fall down or I trip and fall down and get injured, well the rat he will be posting videos for the next three months. He, look at him, he's using sneakers that he knows are no good, because he's a rat. He's a rat. One good rat deserves another between my hangs your... Okay, about six feet. Of this should be a sufficient amount of 
One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen inches, eighteen inches, and eighteen inches. I think I got too much here. Eighteen inches and eighteen inches. Eighteen here, eighteen there. I'll go six more. Cut it. And then I, I have to go into the container for a moment and get the uh get the uh the drill and a one eighth inch bit. Give me, uh, now let's put this away so I don't trip on this. Imagine tripping on the rope that you were putting together to fix your shoe so you wouldn't trip. Oh, boy. The rat, he would be all over that. He'd be rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. He would be rubbing and rubbing. The rat. Ratted me out. He did, indeed, ratted me out. In kind, we proceed. Ratted me out, he did indeed. In kind, we will proceed. It's coming, baby. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Uh, take my word on that. Take my word on that. One good rat deserves another. Between my hangs ya. Oh yeah, baby. battery charger rat me out he did indeed and rat you out we will proceed on multiple levels we are not going singular we are going multiple levels there are going to be it's going to be a worldwide effort rat you out rat me out you did indeed rat you out we will proceed. Rat, 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 rat.
you out. Rat me out, you did indeed. And rat you out, we will proceed. Rat me out, you did indeed. And rat me out, you did indeed. And rat you out, we will proceed. Let's get a, let's do a yellow. Have a nice workbench right here, why not use it? All right. Okay, now I just need to put a little piece of wood on now as a bufferoni so I don't drill a hole into my metal uh, or scratch the metal surface on that. Let's see. Yes, indeed. Now you're going to see Fazio do his thing here. Where the master is going to do some repairs. The master of many trades many many venues in fact uh, we have a little problem here we have a little problem here black ants red ants we have a little problem here <laughs> that's not going to work so good <laughs> moving the operation over <laughs> whole macaroni whole macaroni whole macaroni ho yeah that didn't work at all the, the red ants, they're under attack. Attack ski. So let's go back over here. Okay. Whoa. You don't know if they're still attacking you or it's just the poison they put in your ankle. But I feel it. Rat you out. They will proceed. Rat me out. You did indeed. Rat me out. So I have a little uh, Hoyt. Hoyt uh, set of drills. The best drills in America that you could buy off the shelf. And these are probably 40 or 50 years old. That I, I already... Oh, you boss. Oh, you bum. You bum. The ants. The stingers are still stinging. Boy, those... I'm going to have to get rid of that crap. Okay, so I already marked off. This mark here is where my toes stop back here. So I'm just going to do this front front nodule there. Now you want to get you want to get that thread in there as soon as possible after you make the hole so you don't lose the hole. Which I already did. These sneakers did not last a year before they separated down here. A hundred and forty dollars. Now, and, and it's not a question of being cheap. I would buy another pair. This was the only pair of size 13 sneakers in Bohol in four years that I looked for a pair of size 13 sneakers. So, it's not something easy to come by to begin with. By the way, um, this is a fisherman's fishing net repair cord. 
Uh, it's, believe it or not, the ridiculous amount of money you pay for this crap. This is six cents. No, eight eight cents a meter for one one meter of this is eight cents. It probably cost them about a tenth of a penny, but um, you buy it in a fishing repair stall in Bahal. And this is a fisherman's sewing needle. These are twenty four cents, twelve pesos. So the the materials themselves are a ridiculous amount of money. For what you're getting, but uh, I mean, for eight cents, you can buy a cord for the same eight pesos or uh, five pesos. You could buy a cord this big in most stores. This is the same price as this. If you go to the wrong store, you're going to pay the same price for both of those items. hundred and forty dollars for these sneakers and the glue and soles fell off the sole the, the shoe fell off the sole within a year a hundred and forty come on how does how do we justify that in real life this is nonsense and I paid for my sneakers that didn't fall apart from REI that lasted years I don't know how long they'll last, the new ones will last, but lasted years and years, two years, humping stuff over concrete walls and marine, uh, marine environments, up and down rocks, bulkheads, climbing cranes, climbing backhoes. I paid a maximum, a maximum of 50 bucks. Now, they listed for 85 but I would buy the summer shoes in the middle of the winter, and you'd get them for $49. But if you had to buy them in real life, in real time, in the summer, they were $85. But still, $85 is still 50% less than $140. And I have a pair of those somewhere in uh, cargo, con cargo container one. All right, so I got I got to put a knot in here and uh, I'm done. I don't want to hear, look how cheap Fazio is. I would buy another pair, but you can't buy another pair. They wouldn't even order me another pair, even if I prepaid for another pair of size 13. And this sneaker is made by Morel. Morel garbage, Morel garbage sneakers. Morel garbage sneakers. Morel garbage sneakers on sale here. Morel garbage sneakers are on sale here in the Philippines, baby. And I would imagine, even though this is a size 13, I would imagine you know, every product on their entire Morel line is the same low garbage quality product that they sell. And I bought these in the ICM mall a year ago for 140 bucks and they didn't last a year. Come on. Come on, really? Really? 
and they expect us to be happy with the products they sell here in the Philippines. The Philippines is importing garbage into their country and screwing their own citizens with the garbage that they import into the country. And this is proof. And for a year and a half that I've owned them, for a year, I never did work with them, just walking shoes. Because my foot was swollen, remember? I gotta get something. So for a year and a half I've had them, I would say eight months, I never even worked in them. Never even worked with the shoes on. And they still fell apart. So let's get the knot in here. We get a double. Start off with a double knot so it never pulls through. Just go one loop and two loops like that. Two loops. Yep, I'm going to have exactly the right amount with uh, about 40 inches of string on these two. Now I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to go under, through, pull it through, and I'm going to put a, a double wrap around the top here. A double and another double. And I'm going to go another double. And then I'll cut it short. But I, what I will eventually do is... Um, I don't smoke anymore. Uh, I could look. I, I don't know. I don't, even, I don't even have a lighter. Let me look in the shop for one. Alrighty, uh, I'll do that another day. So let's put these on, and I'll show you my foot, how it's healed up. So we don't have to hear that guy lying and crying about my foot, and that I didn't go to the, uh, what a, what an amazing, what an amazingly worthless use of oxygen. Crying, he never... He's got wounds on top of his foot that he doesn't take care of. Well, um, the medicine seems to have worked just fine for the foot, the healing of the foot. It always was the right foot. Pray, pray that it doesn't come back for me, creep. So this is the right foot. The only, just a little tiny bit of discoloration and the skin is coming back after eight months. So let's put this...
What a creep, man. The guy tells you, mind your own business, and then talks about my foot being cut off from infections. Mind your own business, and then talks about how he wants me to be impaled on something sharp and perhaps seriously injured. Mind your own business, he says. Mind your own business. But he doesn't do that. And then, he doesn't have permits. He has no permit number on the property. Oh my God, that is such a false statement. So, when the inspectors came around, all they did was look around and they, uh, they took the permit number down. I showed them the plans. I showed them the stamps from the building, plumbing and electrical inspection agencies. And they said, carry on, Fazio, carry on, carry on. So let's get, uh, now the other shoe. The other shoe I can hold off on for now, and I will. So I'll do that later. I'll take a break later in the shade because right now the, the the sun is blaring, I say blaring. I'm going to take the drill bit out of here, though. Never leave a drill bit in a drill because if the drill falls, it'll break the bit 90% of the time if the bit hits the floor first or bend it if it's a cheap drill bit or it'll go through your foot. You don't want any of those things happening. So, uh, I have enough string and a needle to finish this job. I'll put this in the top of the, uh, the kit with my Velcro and my stretch uh, material, for uh, which I used to use for my waistline. But now I just have to cut the pants open and sew them closer together. There's no more putting stretch on my pants. We need to modify. Modify and codify. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to go behind the camera for a moment and get a box that I took off the uh, machine to put the camera in to keep the sun off the camera. Because if, get if it gets much hotter on the camera, the camera will just shut off from overheating. So let me get my non-overheating module box full of termites. My termite infested box. which will work just fine for a shade cavity. Look at this. Look what termites have done to this box. This is marine plywood. This marine plywood box was in my house getting disassembled by termites. Notice they left the wood and they ate the glue between the, glue, the wood. And that's why China is putting that kind of glue in there. There are other glues in other plywoods that termites won't touch, but every sheet of plywood or polyphenolic board that comes into the Philippines, polyphenolic board, is used the same glue. And the termites go after the glue the same way. China is screwing the Philippines. The buyers that buy the Chinese plywood probably don't have much of a choice but they in turn are screwing the philippines the glue is the only thing that needs to be changed to stop the termites from eating the plywood and how much more could it cost for a, one glue or another when considering if you don't use the good glue the plywood lasts three or four months before it rot, rots out from water and two years before the termites destroy it. So answer that question. It's cheaper to use a better glue, no matter how much that glue costs, 
than it is to use Chinese garbage plywood and Chinese garbage glue. Come on, man. This is exactly, this is exactly, this is in my house. This was in my house. This is not, this is a piece of wood that came out of another box that was just fell apart. This is the wood. The wood is still here. The glue is gone. The Chinese are screwing us big time. Okay, I have one more thing. I'm gonna pull the cover off the cement mixer. I need, I have one more thing inside the container. One more thing to do back there in preparation for today's job. I have, well, I have to shut the lights off from the back, the, the back end of the property. I'll be right back. On my way back up to the front of the property. Just got to get a piece of wood out of here. Freaking, freaking termites are attacking everything again. Yo, Dang! Dang! I'll be back in a minute.
All right. Boy, I, I've been asking them. See, this is how Filipinos are. They do a specific job, right? They climb the tree to get the coconuts. But he doesn't need money today. Well, he knows I want him to climb the tree for a week or get me coconuts for a week. He's saving me until he needs money to come back and climb the tree. Instead of collecting the money, saving the money, and using it for when he needs it, I've asked him four times to climb. Yeah, he's going to climb the tree. He's going to come back tomorrow. Yeah, but he doesn't because each day that he doesn't come back, I see him go buy a bottle of Tandoi rum. So he has enough money for the rum, and that's the only thing that's important for today. And that's why I refuse to hire a Filipino that drinks alcohol once I start the, con the major construction. Because they only think for today. I'm going to disassemble the uh, covering from the uh, cement mixer now. I need to uh, I, I want to get rid of a, an old log that's on the property. I don't need it. All right, that log is just underneath that tarpaulin there. I'm going to get the chainsaw chopped that up. I'll be back in 60 seconds.
Okay. All right, so I'm going back into the container to get some orange spray paint and my wallet. My wallet needs to be painted orange again. Look at that, and there's orange. Orange on the wall, baby. Safety color, not as good as yellow. Then again, nothing is. So I need my wallet before I forget. And the orange spray paint, I won't forget. smart thing to do right now would be to uh, get the blower and blow the ants out of here so they don't keep biting my ankles.
That's not even possible. That's not even possible. It's not possible. No, 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 it's... There it is. I have a pretty darn good recollection of where I put everything and I know I put this can of spray paint next to the front of the container because it's something that if I don't put it in the front of the container I have to walk all the way to the back of the container and put it in a, a milk crate with other uh, spray paints. But this is the only orange spray paint I have in this cargo container one. I didn't, I do have, I did buy, I think I bought six. White, orange, and green street markers. Two of each. When I was in America. And uh, they're in cargo container one. So... If I don't have this, I can't mark my, I, I mark my wallet so I don't leave it on the counter or if it falls down, I'll see it right away, hopefully. Should I mark the bills? <laughs> then I'd have marked bills in the Philippines, yeah baby? I won't mark the bills. Okay. Uh, I'll be, I gotta get some tape. Yeah, baby, I got ratted out. I I was officially ratted out by somebody. I don't know that the inspectors came to my property per se to ask me questions. They have jobs going on, well, all around me. But, uh, or, or, there's another possibility. Well, the possibility is real that someone called up because somebody called for the uh, exposing of Fazio working on his property without a permit. Rat! You, you unquestionable rat. You are an amazing little man. And uh, now they, they could have just gone next door where there is a licensed job going on by uh, several different companies. But... They could have stopped by figuring I was going to buy him lunch, which is not going to happen. That's a, bad, that's a bad habit to get into. Even though I've been told here, if you want to get your permits, you have to take care of them. You have to grease them. No, I, I don't do that. They, they can do their job. And that'll be just fine with me that they do their job. If it takes them a few days to get there, to pass a stamp, put a stamp on my plans to go to the next stage, I'll wait a few days. But I don't, uh, I don't pay off inspectors. Bad idea. Bad idea. I don't care where you're from. Bad idea. Bad, bad, bad. They'll be back every three or four days for lunch money. I don't know about in the Philippines, but in America, boy, they just... Uh, 
They just think that you're an ATM machine.
be right there. be right there. On my way. On my way, 30 seconds, and I'll be there, 30 seconds, and I'm back. I had a couple of more pieces of wood for uh, my landlord's um, my landlord cooks with wood, coconut shells, coconut leaves, but I give her all my wood, considering that uh, the other two guys I was given the lumber to would only pick it up when they needed it that day, which goes again to show, like the boy who takes the coconuts off the tree, four, five, six days ago, maybe I asked him, I want my I want those coconuts on top. I want them taken down. I'll give you pesos. Okay. You heard it in a live stream. But he doesn't need money today. So when I yelled out as he walked by, he just made believe he didn't hear me. Because he already has enough money for a bottle of rum. There's nothing more important than a bottle of rum at 9.30 in the morning. What quarter to 10 was it? So he... he who knows, he may show up, but he had four coconuts in his possession when he walked by, big ones. And I want him to give me some big ones, green ones, brown ones that are ready to, to, to grind up. And I want the coconuts off the tree in front of the house for either so they don't fall down on me when I walk under the tree or for my landlord for her fire. He doesn't need money. See, he's walked by this house like six times in the last three days and looked at me and then looked the other way and gone. He'll, he'll be happy to take the coconuts off the tree. I've known him since he was like seven years old. But he doesn't need money today. The guys who were supposed to take the wood didn't need the wood that day. So they didn't come and take the wood. They only work when they absolutely have to and need something. So I'm going to cut, now, aside from that wood that I cut before, I'm going to cut a couple of wedges. For a few different reasons, one, to have it in stock, because I used my other wedges up on top, under the wheel of the uh, jet ski, just for, for, for dunnage purposes, but um, the other two that I had, they just, they weren't a good quality coconut lumber, they just rotted away. One's over there, one I don't know where it is. The rat. Hey, rat, how you doing today? I'm going to get right on those phone numbers and the email. I'm going to get right on that. 
Next time I have an hour that I have nothing to do, I'll give them a nice detailed description like you gave a nice detailed description of my property. Where it is, my name, boy oh boy. Will he ever learn? Alrighty, we're done with that orange paint. We don't want it to sit in the sun. It wouldn't make a difference if it did, but we just don't want it to. The tape goes back in the house. We, here's, here's what happened to the other wedge. See how the uh, termites and wood bugs ate the, the heart of the lumber out? So this was a wedge, viable wedge, six months ago, and now it's just garbage. That's why we're not building, why, why I'm building a concrete hotel. Okay, so this can go there. The next thing I want to do is cut two more wedges, at least. So, I did not want to take them out of the wood I have under here because this is quality, high, high density lumber. I'm going to go up on the roof. I'm going to go up on the roof and get some shorter high density lumber. Those are 10 footers and 12 footers. I don't want to cut a 10 or a 12 down. I'll be back in probably five minutes. You could watch me go up and down the ladder in case, um, in case you want to rub one, uh, I know he's going to be rubbing. When I walk up that ladder, he's always rubbing and a rubbing and a rubbing. Well, I got a nice, a nice piece of two by four. That's one nice piece I got. Uh, it'll be okay. It's not really that nice, but it's not good for much else. So, that goes down.
Rub it. Put your hands out of your pockets. Stop rubbing. It ain't gonna happen this trip. Amazing. As soon as I walk up and down the ladder, he starts rubbing. I know he's like that. Put it, take your hands out of your pockets. I'm back down on solid ground. Now, I will use, I will use in the I will use again the chainsaw over here to um, cut 60 degree wedges. Not going to happen like that. All right, that's one good one there. And that's another one like that. That one could go like that. This one goes like that. And these wedges are going to be for when I put uh, something and I want to lock it down, I'll just jam the wedge underneath it. I need the earphones. I'm not going to be chainsawing without the earphones. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, boy. When something happens twice, time to do it a different way.
I'm just getting the electric set up for the next stage here. Give me a moment. Huh. Huh.
I hit a nail. I don't often hit nails, but when I do, I get upset. Because just one nail with those cheap, uh, well, chainsaw blades, they don't take a lot of ten penny nails. So that's why it took, uh, you could see the smoke towards the end. And I have a sharpener. I really don't feel like opening up that box and sharpening it now, but I'm done with it for today, no matter. So, yeah, one, you could cut a hundred nails with a good skill saw blade, carbide tip. A hundred nails wouldn't dull out a good saw if you cut through it slow. But one nail dulls those chainsaw blades before it's through the nail. Okay, so we're going back over to the I'm gonna put those up on the table, get them ready to paint. I'll probably paint those wedges with that garbage yellow paint. Yeah, because the yellow is, the wedge now becomes not a piece of wood anymore, it becomes a tool. So painting them yellow would be in line with a tool. So I'm gonna put the, um, This up there, you could watch me throw them up on the roof and I'll be back because I, I had to get the camera out of the sun. The sun is too hot for the camera. Another minute or two, five maybe, the sun would have overheated the camera and it would have shut off. So I'll throw these up on the roof, fold up this tarpaulin. I'm gonna fold up this top lean a little bit. I'm not gonna make a production out of it. I'm just gonna fold it up a little bit so it's out of the way 
I don't run it over. And both, and it's hot. Oh, it's blaring hot. And I haven't eaten anything at all since five o'clock last night. So that is uh, five plus seven. 12 plus 7, 19 hours. I bet you it's 93 degrees. Well, well, I bet you it's 100 in the sun right now. 100 degrees. I bet every. I bet it's 100. I got to get one of those thermal imaging tools. I'm going to be wetting myself down in a moment. I'll get a second wind here. Blaring hot today. Blaring hot. Blaring hot, I say. Blaring hot. And bright. So, I'm going to move the camera back. And what I'm going to do now is uh, set up, check on the machine, and uh, make sure it's startable. And I'm going to wet my head down. And then you... You can see I made another box of wood debris there. That's from my landlord. That's another box. That's the box today. That's three big boxes. And uh, it's not much. She has workers that can get that stuff for her off the beach but 
they also have their jobs to do. And they'll come and next time you see one of them go past my house, I'll say, Brian, Nanai, Wood, oh, oh. And he'll say, oh, oh, Salamat. Sean! 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 Kristen! No, the Lee? Homina? Kristen? Huh. Huh. Oh, you know what? Huh. 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 Huh.
here. I'm, I'm just checking something out down on the ground here. I, uh, I'm going to sit down for a minute and do some thinking what I want to do next. Because if I do one thing next, it's going to interfere with doing something else next. Not that it will stop me. But it would be an extra step I don't need taken later on, so. I'm gonna get these confounded weeds out of here. Don't need those. And I don't need that there. Okay, so I what I have to do to the machine is going to take a couple of hours. Not not the big machine, the little machine. So you're probably not going to get to watch that. So I'm going to go set all the dials and the instruments on the big machine to start up in about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. And uh, in about 35 or 40 minutes, I'm gonna start the big machine. You guys can go grab breakfast, whatever. I'm not gonna start it up for 35 to 40 minutes from now. I have some work to do to prepare the instrumentation for proper alignment and I also uh, want to get the GPS on the machine correct so I know how high the property is It's got to go seven feet. I can't go seven feet that way. Is Christian over there? No. Salamat. Ah, uh, let's see. What should I do next? Ah, 
should I do next? Ugh. Well, I really should start the machine and get fluid through everything, so I think I'll uh, spring this outside, the cement mixer. Good. Uh, I need a an old chain. I need a chain. I need to. I'm just putting uh, some waste oil on the tracks. Right? That's what I do with my old cooking oil. I put it on the tracks of the machine. The oil is oil, right? Oil is oil. And at twelve dollars a gallon, any oil in the stone, any oil port in the stone.
going to just go finalize the uh, checklist. Then I still need a chain. I'm gonna go get a. I'm gonna check uh, check my last three points of checking on the machine, and then I'll get a chain from one of two places.
coming back now. I have one more, one more thing to check on the machine, and we're going to start it up and pull the cement mixer out of the yard. So that should start happening in about 15 minutes from now. <clears throat> All right, what we need now is a chain. Oh, oh. And a lock. Pain. I don't want to do it with a rope. Could, but I'm not. Okay. Uh, five more minutes on the next. Five more minutes on the next part of the job. Oh, let's see what we got here. Five more minutes on the next part of the job, and um. Will be uh, oh. 
Will be. Ah. Five more minutes on the next part of the job, and we'll be good. I'm going to go get the chain now and tie the chain to the front of the machine. Man handling the machine, not girly boy, sissy handling, man handling, we call that. Not long now. Not long now. All righty, the 
big test is coming up. Will it start? It's always questionable. that boom. You can't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay.
You have to wonder what goes through their minds. She looked at the machine. She saw the fence was open. The machine is running. The wheelbarrow's outside the gate. And where did she park? Directly, directly in front of the machine. Not to the side or, well, a little bit to the side, but directly in the way of me moving the machine and the wheelbarrow much further. What goes, in, what goes on inside their minds, I don't know. Okay. I got a little, a little thing to do over on the side over here. I gotta knock down a pile of dirt. It's just gonna be in my way for the rest of the day. If I don't knock it down now, I'm gonna have to knock it down later.
the wood I need to cover up that uh, drywall that I made and put the dirt on top of the drywall is up on the roof. So it's just starting to rain. It's a light rain, so it's no big deal. And you are covered inside this little enclosure here. I got to go up on the roof and throw down some scraps of plywood. So I'll be about uh, four or five minutes. I'm going to check for comments now, maybe when I come back down. Scott, I had a question for you if you're here. Uh, I have a question about avocados. I'll be right down. Well, you know what? You should watch me climb up and down the ladder. Maybe that guy could uh, do a little rubbing. Maybe he's going to get lucky today. You never know, right? He likes to rub when I climb. Rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and hoping and praying I get hurt like the little sadistic little man that he is. And uh, I'm going to fix you. You should read, uh, you should read a little bit more. See if you, you can understand English, because I put some good words out there recently. Rubbing yet? Are you rubbing yet?
Okay, so uh, the next thing I got to do, I, I broke up that pile of dirt over there where the machine is on the ground. The problem is I, I took that dirt. That's the dry well. That's the dirt from the dry well. And I don't want to fill the dry well up by putting dirt back on top of a really poor quality piece of rotted plywood. So I'm going to put fresh plywood on top of that. And I have a piece of canvas cut to put on top of the plywood. And I'm going to go get a shovel and a good rake. In the container for a shovel and the rake, about three minutes. Alright, so stop raining. Uh, 
quite point through over here. All right, I'm going to cover up that white plywood I just put there and the white canvas.
Get water, and then I'm going back to work. Whew! Freaking hot and in the sun, baby. Check the, check the stream. Make sure there's no fools doing foolish things. Look, Jack. The rake. See the rake? Right? The way it's supposed to be, Jack. You know that. I know you were going to say something if it wasn't like that. So I figured I'd save you the trouble. Jack. Lurking. Waiting. Just waiting and lurking and waiting for Fazio to make an error. An unforced error. Come right out of the shadows. Put the rake around the other way. Sh shuffle that rake. Oh boy, it is... I'm not even kidding, it's hot. It's really hot. I should have brought my long sleeve sweatshirt with the hood and wet it down out from the container. That would keep me cool. All right, I don't see, okay, I don't see any comments at all. Scott. Scott is here, okay. Yeah, see, I wasn't seeing the comments. They were not rolling down. We must have uh, lost the internet for a few minutes. Uh, Jack is lurking. Paint everything. You gotta paint it. The paint, it, it, it protects it to some degree. But not not a hundred percent. Okay. Uh oh, Scott had a dream. Liver and onions. Oh God, you know how much I love liver? Oh, I freaking love liver. I never thought about that. And Ellie Mae Cement Pond. Ellie Mae and Jed Clampett. Okay. 
I don't know what the what the glue is made out of, but it's not fair that they put it in the wood. Wow. Okay. I'm uh, I'm up to the top of the comments. Uh, they don't they have good quality shoes in REI but REI does not deliver to the Philippines make myself an Ellie Mae and Jethro cement pond that chainsaw is probably well that chainsaw is seven and seven years old. I bought it the first week I got to the Philippines because I, I needed a chainsaw where I lived. When I got to Bahal, they had trees covering everything. You couldn't see 40 feet out the window. No air was coming in. And I said to the guy, can I trim the trees? Yeah, sure. And when I trimmed the trees, or did he get pissed off? I trimmed too much. Like they're not going to grow back. Super vivid dream last night, Michael. You were angry at more puppies under your house. Haven't seen somebody, I don't know who it was, somebody got rid of all the dogs except for two adult dogs and one puppy. They're all gone, and I mean all gone. So I'm thinking somebody fed them to the pigs, to be honest with you. There was probably 12, 16 dogs at night howling and screaming all night. Now there's the mother dog of the puppies that even Daisy and I saved from four years ago. There's another dog that's new, but not from the old batch, and one puppy. So there's three stray dogs now. I crawled out and you ran down to the beach with you. Then Z2 went into the container and got a set of keys and some kind of pouch you said you were looking for, oh boy, that's a pain in that, LOL. Hey, Scott. Hey, Jack. Same shit, different a-hole. Yeah, that's pretty much the story of my life. You catch any of these, any of the other cyber symposiums on Onan for Mike, Lindell's Lindell's FrankTalk.com, absolutely worthless. Michael showing the termite damage should prove why everything should be painted. The king of pressure washing. There's not enough water to pressure wash, Jack. The pressure washer works on a siphon hose out of that 15 gallon drum on the side of my house. Although I could hook it up to a 55 gallon drum but I, I just don't have the room for the drum on the ground floor. They are doing that. Obama was uh, one that wanted to have the uh, the street gangs become, uh, um, uh, you know, legalized to uh, become uh, the thugs. The thugs on the street, he wanted them to be guards for the buildings. Scott Del Fuego, there comes knowledge. I've got a feeling when the body under that layer of adipose, oh boy, adipose fat, is revealed, Michael is going to be a real freaking tank. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I took my break, but I didn't get any water.
and I need water. It is so hot out here. Already today, I have uh, probably consumed Probably consumed I can't get this thing to go back down to normal size Probably consumed close to a gallon of water since this morning when I went in the house before I drank a whole 700 milliliter bottle and when I was on the, on the machine, I drank half of a liter, for sure. This is distilled water. Scott, if I wanted to have, because I got, I don't have enough avocados, but if I wanted to have no apple and the meat like 14 16 ounces of lean pork or liver now that you mention it could i have like two or three avocados with that meal at you know at at the 24 hour mark i think i think from what you said i could do that it wouldn't hurt anything right all right i don't care you got time to answer that question i'm going to bring out the uh cement mixer now and uh, I might even I might even get spunky I'm gonna test the bleed on the uh, I might even get spunky and fly up the jet ski maybe I don't know Because I want to leave the wheelbarrow on the ground as to one of the last things I do. Because I want to, I, I looked at the cover of the wheelbarrow that, that you pull the cord with, and it's a diesel, so it's got a piston pressure release valve you could you could pull the you can roll the, the, the piston over with your teeth you know in, in on the handle but once that once you drop the hammer on the relief valve it should start it started many times when I had it at the factory but I just can't do both you have to have one guy holding the pressure plunger and one guy pulling and it's so hot out, you ain't gonna see a Filipino. You're not gonna see one all day. They hide from the sun. So, unless they're working, but nobody's working today. And uh, so I'm gonna, I might wanna drop the hammer, take the pull cord off, get a nut set up, a, a, an electric drill set up with the proper size socket and turn that over really quick with one of my heavy duty electric drills and then drop the hammer on the plunger and I don't really feel like doing that once it goes upstairs I want to do it on the ground so I'm just going to take this out of the yard so I can pivot the machine so you're going to see me set the chain back up on the front of the cement mixer and then I'm going to pull it out into the into the uh, parking lot then I'm going to turn the machine around and I might fly that jet ski off the roof
that might happen.
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We need power. That we're at three hours and 41 minutes. Uh, the, the machine doesn't go much longer than that. I got to go get a... Uh, power adapter. At four hours it goes off.
Ah. 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 I told you at the four hour mark. Two avocados, I got it. Wrong plug. Okay, I got it, Scott. Two avocados. I got to get in the machine because it's bleeding out. Uh, I think I'm going to fly the jet ski. I, I, but I got to go up on the roof and move the jet ski forward so I can snatch the... So I can snatch the. Uh, I need to. I need to be able to snatch the nylon cinch. I can't get it from where it is. I. I just brought the uh, machine up to the roof, and I could almost reach it. I'm going to have to move the jet ski by hand a little bit. So I'm going to shut the machine off. I'm going to spin it around. In the back of that machine, I have two and a half inches away from that wood pile. And in the front, I'm exactly where I want to be here. I have a foot so I can get back and forth. But I can't grab the center snatch on the jet ski. Uh, I probably could, but I don't want to extend it that far. Oh, I deserve a little break, not a big one. Uh, now I have to debate oh, what I want to do up on the roof. Do I want to bring an electric winch up there and just zoom this jet ski over to the... Or do I want to bust my ass for 45 minutes? You know the answer to that question.
Oh. Uh, I think I'm going to get uh, my 110 volt electric winch out of the shop. I'll bring the camera upstairs. Uh, 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 uh. I have water, drinking water upstairs. We're going upstairs for an hour. I'll put the electric winch to the corner pole here and I'll go like this and pull the jets. Oh, oh, I can't do that. I could, I could do that. I have to put air in the tire first. All right, I'll throw up the air, the air pump, tire filling machine adapter and bring the winch up at 110 volts for the winch. Okay, so you guys are going to be looking at dead air for about se six or seven minutes. Uh, uh. Oh.
have a, a one ton winch, but it's buried. I got to get a flashlight. Uh, oh, oh man, that's twice. Uh. Oh. I have to, I'm going to put the rake and the shovel away. Definitely done with those two things.
Oh. 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 I need to I got paint on the I got paint on the terminals. Not good. got to be 50 degrees hotter inside the container at least I, I don't know 50 or 30 or 35 whoa man is it hot in the back of that container This is a, uh, half ton, half ton, 110 volt winch. Um, it's never, never even, I only turned it on in my house in New York just to see if it went work and it worked when I got it. Since then, I've never turned it on, but I did get white paint on the, uh, the plug outlet. That's no good. Alright, this can go upstairs. I have the 110 electric upstairs. I have a rope upstairs, but I'll bring another rope for uh, I don't really want to use this for the lifting rope, that's for sure. I'll use it to... Oh. 
extend the I use it to extend the winch oh man it's gonna start raining hard I'll just put you under the jet ski. Yeah, I could do that. Ah, ah, ah. I gotta put some tools away first though. I don't need it raining on my power tools. Or the I don't need the chainsaw anymore. Now put that inside. Put these straight things inside. If it does rain, it won't be affecting anything at all. Uh. Huh. 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 Well, if the internet doesn't go off three times a day, the power goes off three times a day. Today the power stayed on and the internet went off. What shit service they have here. This is it's 2021, it's not 1940. The technology is available. But they don't have nuclear power, and that's a good thing. Okay, we're going up on the roof. I have, I don't have. I don't have the winch. I do. is on the hook and you and me and me and you we're going up together man am I tired holy macaroni every muscle in my body is tired but we carry on we carry on 
every muscle in my body is tired. Bend over muscles tired. Finger muscles, okay. Leg muscles tired. Huh. Oh. Huh. One step at a time. It's two o'clock. I think I could fly this jet ski by 4.30. I think I could fly it by three. If everything goes right, in one hour, that jet ski will be on top of the other cargo container. That's a fact. Huh. Huh, 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 huh. Boy, this thing is heavy, too. Probably weighs 14 kilos. Uh, it's got a cable in it. I don't know how many feet of cable. And, a, and an all copper motor. Huh. That little winch was... Uh, I, you know, I, you know what I think, I think I did use this in America. I actually think I did in in my warehouse. I'm not sure about that. Okay, let's show you, let's show you the uh, the yellow ladder. I'm very proud of that yellow ladder. Now it's been baking in the sun. Two days on the first side, and this is, I turned it yesterday morning, so this is a day and a half on this side baking, and it's, uh, that paint dried really nice and hard. That's going to be a great ladder. Oh. All right, so one thing I need is to get up on the roof and plug the, plug the, plug the, the recorder into the electric. Plug the recorder into the electric. Okay, and then first I should move this ladder out of the 100% out of the way. Not like it is now. Oh boy, we're gonna, believe it or not, from not eating, from the heat, from working, from doing all those different things I did today, and I'm okay with it, and I'm really, I need a break, I gotta work five minutes and take a break for five minutes, that's how hot it is today, so, I did bring up the air adapter for the hose, and I do have the air compressor turned on, and I do have the floor jack. I don't think I need that. Well, yeah, in fact, I do need that. I didn't bring up the floor jack handle, nor did I bring up a pair of pliers. Well, I probably don't need that. I could probably just, with a 1,000-pound with a winch, I'll just yoke the jet ski over to exactly where I want it. It's not going to put up that much resistance. So let me get you plugged in here. Even though I have 
Huh. Oh, ain't that a mutter? Ain't that a mutter? That's a mutter. Oh, that's not a father, it's a mutter. It got hung up on something down there. A foot short. Where now I gotta get on my hands and knees to reach it. Ain't that a mutter? It is a mutter. No, not my hands and knees. I stand corrected. On my belt. On my belt. Oh. Holy crap. I made it free and clear when I was down there before, too. And... Free and clear now. What the hell? What the hell is that smell? No, 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 no. Weird smell. Somebody's burning diapers. Jesus. Damn baby type of stink. Oh. Oh, they usually only burn those stipers at night. But it's a rainy day. And I told you it's, uh, it's raining out. And it's on and off showers. And, uh, well, burning diapers. We have not had a garbage pickup in six years. Six years. No garbage pickup in six years. Huh? I'm gonna put the Let me get this winch. Make sure it works.
Yeah, I did use it in the warehouse because apparently I put a couple of kinks in the, which I don't care about. It's 20 degrees below zero. I really wasn't caring so much about whether I kinked that cable or not. Oh, uh, you dog. And, uh, the mouse is off of here. Or the mouse never was on here. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm going to have to go from the other side. I got to get air in the tire now. Move these wedges I cut. Let me get the air in the tire so I don't have to waste a lot of energy pulling on a flat tire. That doesn't make any sense at all. Take a nap. I'm ready to quit. And I got two hours to go before I sleep, before I bathe, and nap. Oh.
Oh, yeah. The air is going to pie now. Wedges are out without using the jack. Because I set the wedges at the height of the tire when it was low. And when it when I felt when I inflated the tire, it jacked it up off the wedges. Did I get lucky or am I thinking ahead? You decide. All right, now I need a rope onto that back quarter cable. And I need to, uh, I need a rope around the corner of the, oh boy. Oh, another break, another break. Uh-oh, oh, I gotta go back over there. Clear the jack out from underneath the, Jet ski it won't fit underneath the racks. Okay. <sighs> okay. I gotta go clear the axles, but in the meantime. Man, they're burning diapers in the daytime. And I don't, I, ever, I don't remember anybody doing that in a long time. Huh. I'm just gonna put a couple of wraps on here. Not even one wrap on the pipe. And then I'm going over to the top of the ladder to wrap it around the top of the ladder. It's not, there's enough friction like that. It's not gonna, not gonna, not going anywhere. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna put a strain on this. Okay, clear the clear the base of the jet ski out. All right, now, if I start pulling this load, if I put a strain on this, it should, it should, it should pull the, should pull the jet ski down, the, uh, should pull the nose of the jet ski down, that white, uh, the tongue, the tongue. And it should pull it over to me. 
I should pull it forward. Now, it's going to pull it over towards the edge of the container, which gives me more re- As soon as this nose goes down, it's going to start walking over towards the edge. Okay. Each time I do that, it's moving two inches. I might not, you know what, um, what, we were into this for five hours. Five plus nine, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, but it's starting to rain a little heavy. I don't know that I want to fly this machine today. Because, only because of three things. One, I need to make a, a perch for the stick so that the stick, so that the stick, see the, the boom and the stick, they bleed out. Now, if I put the stick over the jet ski, I probably have about three minutes To get up here, hook up the nylon, and to get back downstairs before the stick sets itself on top of the jet ski, that would not be a good thing. But if I made a boom stick, a stick that would hold up the, a boom perch tomorrow, then I could, I could have all the time I want to secure this the way I, I want. So what I think I'm gonna do is just get this machine. Right now, I could probably grab it with the machine, but I don't have a boom or a stick perch. So by the time I get the cement mixer back in the yard, that'll be another hour. It's two o'clock now, and I have another half hour, 40 minutes to put everything away, so. That would make it three, that would make it 345. And if I did fly it up to the other container, that would be another hour and a half to get out the ladder and to go up there and secure it and bring the boom perch up there. Yeah, I'm gonna, you guys might, if you wanna go to sleep, Scott or anybody else, I'm not gonna fly it today. I'm gonna fly it tomorrow morning, that's for sure. Maybe I'll even get up early to do that, but. I want to build a boom perch, and I want to, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to fly it on just the center strap, and that's what I would have to do. The center strap is pretty, pretty damn close to dead center, and the jet ski is tied down with a hundred feet of twine, orange twine, but that does not give me a triangular base to pick up from, like a three-point base to pick it up from it. So I'm going to tell you guys that if you want to go, I won't be flying this today. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm going to just get it to where I want. I'm going to put some of those wedges that I cut. I'm going to pick this tongue up put it on the staircase that I'm sitting on and just uh, call it a day.
Ugh. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick the tongue up and put it on the staircase so I can get three more feet forward. Okay. All right, you can watch it from there. I don't want to plug this back in. Hold on. And it was pretty much low. Yeah, I'm not going to fly it today. So you guys want to go to bed, go to bed. I have work to do. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, ready? Tongue up. Come on. Tongue up. Oh. 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 One more tongue up to the top step. Sure, why not? Ah! 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 Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Where I got this thing now, that is freaking beautiful. Straining now, you hear it straining? Which is not anywhere near a thousand pounds. Oh. So. I'm gonna release this rope. I'm gonna release a rope that you can't see. Now you can see it. I'm going to release this rope and use this rope as the snatch rope to snatch it up to the... up to the pole I got the winch on so we can't walk back. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, yeah, I could do that. I don't want to pull it up any further because I don't need it up any further. But I do want to lock it, wherever it is. Huh. Yeah, I want to lock it.
but not from that, okay? I want to lock it from here. Huh. All right. I want to lock it from there. I want to lock it onto the rope that I used to cinch the cable hoist puller. And then I'll be able to release the cable hoist and put that away. You don't need that anymore. That's the first time in two and a half years I used that. Hey Jack, I could have used this machine to pick up those buckets, but that's just too much. It's too slow. All right, I'm gonna release this cable now. All right, I'm gonna pull the cable back into the... Oh, yeah. I got it locked up so it can't walk back. I got it locked up so it can't walk over. Pulling out the plug for the winch. Up. Oh. Huh. Get the, I'm going to get the nylon strap. <clears throat> now that line, nylon strap that you're going to see me playing with is good for 18,000 pounds. So we won't have to worry about the jet ski falling off. All right, tomorrow's another day, and it's already after two. It's going to take an hour to get that cement mixer back in and birth the machine. That's three, and another half an hour for tools. That's 3.30, 3 4 o'clock. I'm going to call it a day. Oh, call me a sissy. I don't care. Oh. Yeah, that's it for me today. That's a hundred percent sure. I'm done. I'll just turn this around. We'll lower that winch now. We're done. Oh boy. We're done. 
with the winch up here. Ah, 100% all together. Oh, 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 100%. Good night. Uh, uh, the alarm will probably go on for about, well, I'll tell you how long it'll go on for. As long as the battery lasts. It's at 19%, so we have a half an hour. We have a half an hour for sure. So, I see somebody left a comment, maybe. One of my friends saying goodnight. No. Okay, all right, so I don't really want any comments, and uh, I, I'm too tired to answer comments unless, again, from my friends only. So let's get this stuff downstairs. Uh, oh I'm going to get the hook and hook the winch on the hook. downstairs you're coming with me okay take your hands out of your pockets dude I don't think this is gonna be the one either okay I gotta be careful of the air hose because the air hose is about to fall down with the air nipple air nipple falling down so when I get downstairs I'll uh, be taking care of that first huh. nipple air hose uh oh uh oh I could do that but I won't do that I forgot to un uh okay I gotta do the air hose first and then the electric cord which is free and clear it should flop off the roof but I got to be careful it doesn't flop on my head. Uh. Huh. 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 Let's see. Let's see about this. Check this out. Uh, wrong, wrong plug. Right plug. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh. 
Ha. Ha. Why is this plug? Ha. Plug doesn't work. It's not plugged in. Worked this morning. But it was plugged in this morning. A big difference. Plugged in, not plugged in. Big difference. I got to get in the machine now. Spin that machine around. I want to get an eyeball on uh, how high I have to make that boom and uh, stick perch tomorrow. So I'm going to be uh, spinning the machine around so I can get an eyeball on the height of, I think, uh, six feet. I think six feet. Should be a enough of a boom perch for the for the stick not to fall down on the jet ski. While I, while I'm over here, and I have the uh, oh, the tracks exposed to the ones I didn't get oil on before, I'm gonna just oil the ones I can get now. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. Now this oil here, this is just used 40 weight oil. All right, so I got what I could get, and now the next time I move the machine, if the tracks, if I can see knuckles that haven't been done, I'll do it again. I'm going in the machine, and I'm gonna get the height of the perch.
Ugma, 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 my one tag will take it off.
Uh, um,
Oh. All right. That's it. I'm gonna. That's it. I'm gonna put this up there. Put this over. Here. No. Got to blow the ants out of here again. Those freaking fire ants. Oh boy. Uh, oh boy. What a pain in the neck those things are. Once they get a foothold. They're all over the place anyway, but I just it's just new that there's a nest here. I mean new like within a day. Like today was the first day, so maybe this is their breeding season. I don't know. Where's the rat? Where's the rat? Is the rat still with us? Of course, the rat is still with us. So, so rat, so rat. So tomorrow, if I get an hour in the morning, I'm going tit for tat with the rat. Rest assured, everything about anything I know that's illegal is gonna be shared. Rest assured, you did it to me. I think it's only fair to return the favor. But anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Where's the rat? Hey, rat, come on. Come on on here. Go start. Say hello from one of your other fake channels. Hey, rat, look. Look at this. this look at this yard. Oh, boy. I need water. Not today. Look at this yard. Oh boy. Does this look like a yard with a lot of junk in it? Just a couple of pieces of cardboard. And the cardboard that was under here, that cardboard is for a very special reason. When I take a bath at the end of the day, if I walk on this dirt here, then I get mud on my feet. So I put cardboard down around here whenever I get a box. So, hey rat! No. no. Not you. You're not a rat. You, Ugma? Okay, okay Ugma. Not today. I'm... Tomorrow. Kapoi. Salamat. I told him I'm too tired today to do this. So, hey, rat. So, where do you see garbage, rat? I mean, I'm not real sure. I see $700 worth of lumber there. I see a machine. I see three wheelbarrows in the back with a 16-foot bench. I see a brand new quality painted ladder on the roof. I see a construction grade ladder over there. Hey, rat, rest assured, we're gonna go tit for tat, rat. Now, uh, I, I, I already, you already know that I know, that you know, that I know. Oh, you know that I know that you know. Ugma, yes. Salamat, maybe Lima. I told them five. 
Uh, we already know that you're a rat. And we already know what you're capable of, and you've proven it. So when when I get time, I'm going to write a proper letter. I'm going to put my name, my telephone number, and my email address on that letter, and I'm going to I'm going to do it in a legal way. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it the sneaky way that you did it by calling on other people to go make them go to Fazio's house. I'm going to put my name right on the application. Don't don't make any bones about it. Take that. Take that to your buddies. But anyway, I don't see any garbage here. I see a $1,200 cement mixer. I see some junk lumber that I cut for my neighbor I see $700 worth of lumber underneath that pile of tarpaulin and metal I see well over $1,000 worth of lumber that blue lumber that goes horizontal that's $1,000 worth of lumber and I see another $1,000 worth of lumber underneath the tarpaulin up there but I don't see any garbage so that's another false accusation lie bologna and cheese sandwich that you're shoving down people's throats dude i'm gonna make you so wish that you never talked to me ever i'm gonna make you so wish you didn't claim that you were a victim i'm gonna make you so wish that you would have shut your mouth about an accident that i had on the internet but i am gonna make you wish that for the rest of your life However long that is, you are going to wish that you would have never started singing, especially songs about me. It's going to happen, dude. It's already did happen. You just have to get back here to see what happened. I'm done. Uh, I know LaRue is here by the wonderful comment that's left here. Hey, LaRue. Welcome, LaRue. I hit my big like. Thank you. Hello, my dear friend Scott. LaRue, I think Scott's sleeping. I believe he's sleeping. And Jack, uh, he, he, I haven't seen Jack in about two hours, LaRue. He might be sleeping as well. He's getting ready for his big... Uh, uh, we're not going to talk about that. But but he's got, he's got big plans coming up within the next week or so, Jack does. So, we'll... Uh, next time we see Jack, we'll say hello to him and, and goodbye, too. Hello and goodbye to Jack Thompson. LaRue, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm so tired, I can barely walk. And I still have 35 minutes to close up the container and 35 minutes to take a bath. So I'm really, really tired, and I apologize, LaRue. Thank you for stopping by. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm exhausted. I worked out here in the heat all day. Thank you, sweetheart. Bye-bye for now. Okay, so this is... Uh, this is Michael Fazio. I can't close this. this. When this thing gets hot, the screen doesn't work so well. This is Michael Fazio in the Philippines. Taking care of business. Building, prepping to fly the... I think, well, I'm going to pull that panel off the side of the cement mixer first thing. I'm going to find a six-inch extension and a drill and a socket that will turn that cement mixer diesel engine over. And I'm going to get that diesel engine started in the morning just because it hasn't run in four months. Now, it won't hurt anything because when I put oil in there, I put a, 
Lucas Oil in with the oil. So the rings, valves, whatever's inside the internals are well lubricated. And it, it, it turns over. I could put the pull cord in my mouth, release the pressure relief and pull it with my mouth. So it's free and clear. But I, I, think, I think I might get up early tomorrow, start the live stream early, and get that done. That's why I set the, the machine up backwards over here, so that it will be in the, in the shade and a quick walk from the back of the machine to my tool room. And I think I could get that started in about an hour. Then I'm going to build, I'm going to take the nail gun out and I'm gonna build a perch six foot, six foot high with a T, a T perch. I'm gonna, for the stick and the boom on top of the container so it doesn't, when, when, the, when the pistons bleed out on the boom and the stick, the perch will hold it up so that I can secure all the ropes and picking points that I want on the pick itself from the container. And then I'm gonna, I, the way I have the machine, I can actually just move this machine up without moving the cement mixer right now and make the pick from the roof on top of the cargo container one to the roof on top of cargo container two. I can do that without moving the machine an inch. I might move it two feet forward, but I don't have to move it. That's the way I set this up tonight. So I won't have to move the cement mixer in and out, in and out, in and out. And then if I get the cement mixer running, then the cement mixer flies up to that roof first. And I'll just get it out of the way and set it up on top of that and chain it down. So uh, that's my plan. And we're ready, we're, I'm ready, to, I could fly the cement mixer right now. Well, I mean, in the morning I could do it. But I wanna get it started. I haven't started it up in four months. I make it a point to start all my engines at least two or three or four times a year if possible. Um, now I'm down to one, two, three, three engines from about 24 that I used to have in Florida. Let's see, I'll count them out. I had two engines in the boat and I had one on the Anna Capri and I had one on the aluminum dinghy. That's four marine engines. Then I had a gasoline powered compressor, that's five. I had a trenching machine that was six. That was a diesel, uh, a 22 horse Kubota. And I had a 22 horse Kubota welder, that's seven. I had a two and a quarter inch sump pump, that's eight. I had a 1970 Ford pickup, a 1976 Ford van, a 1994 Ford Taurus, that's 11, a Cobra, a 1995 Ford 250 Super Duty, and a 1987 Chevy Sierra 3500. So that, that's 14. I had 14 engines that I would have to start up two or three times a year. Oh yeah, I had the Bobcat, that's 15. The Bobcat would have been 15. That's, I had 15 gas or high, um, diesel combustion engines, and I had 63 tires on all the equipment in my yard. 63 tires I had to maintain. No more of that stuff. No more of that.
We're done with uh, owning heavy equipment companies. Okay, so thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye for now. I'm Bing Permi from Michael Fazio, otherwise known as Mr. Congeniality, because I'm the nicest guy I know. Ask me, I'll tell you. And I'm Bing Permi, which means take care always from the Philippines, baby. That's right.